This is the sermon for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Have you ever felt that God is far away? This time of social isolation to help curb the spread of COVID-19 might be one of those times when we wonder if God is there for us at all. You might feel alone in your house or apartment or room. You may also have already experienced a loved one or someone else that maybe you've heard of dying of this disease. So since our awareness of God's presence often comes when we worship God together and, and when we enjoy Bible study and together we pray to God with each other in Jesus' name, you might feel more distant with God than you, are, than you are together with your fellow Christians, your siblings in Christ. I have read to you before parts of a poet's attempt to be close to God. I hope you don't mind if, um, I've, repeat, if I've read this before. The poet is Jory Graham, and she just happens to have another one of her poems published in the New York Magazine, and I think she is a fine uh, incredible poet. And this is about the difficulty of praying. It's called Praying Attempt of May 9th, 2003. I don't know where to start. I don't think my face in my hands is right. Please don't let us destroy your world. No, the world. I know I know nothing. I know I can't use you like this. It feels better if I'm on my knees, if my eyes are pressed shut so that I can see the other things, the tiniest ones, which can still escape us. Am I human? Please show me mercy. No, please show a way. If I look up, all the possibility that you might be there goes away. I need to be curled up this way, face pressed, knees pulled up tight. I know there are other ways less protected, more expressive of surrender. But here I can feel the whole crushing emptiness on my back, especially on my shoulders. The poem goes on. But reading this far, oh my goodness, how the past shows how, how the poet shows how hard it can be to know or to believe that God is there with us. What a struggle it can be. I think this is a brilliant poem, by the way. I think of the Babylonian siege of Jerusalem in 586 BC, when the walls of the city were breached and the temple was destroyed and some 20,000 people were taken to Babylon. You may recall another poem in which God seemed far away. And this one is Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept. When we remembered Zion, on the willows there, we hung up our harps. For our captors asked us for songs and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? In ancient times, people believed that each nation had its own god or gods. The Jews exiled in Babylon felt cut off from their god, their god who was far away in Jerusalem, the people in Babylon probably felt that all hope was lost and that they had lost their spirits and that they would never come home again. But the prophet Ezekiel 
who came with the people of Babylon had a vision. A vision of a great valley. It was full of bones. So I guess it's time to drink to, to sing the dry bone song. Everybody ready? Them bones, them bones, them. Hang on just a second. I have some claves here. That'll give some dry bone sound here. Them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, now hear the word of the Lord. God said to Ezekiel, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh, Lord God, you know. Ezekiel was echoing the mood of the people, the captive slaves in Babylon. They had lost their hope. They had lost their spirit. They thought they would never come home again. Even Ezekiel must have doubted that these dry bones in this vision, in these dry bones, the people of Israel could ever come to life. So Ezekiel said, O oh Lord God, you know. But God said to Ezekiel, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, I will come and bring breath unto you, and you shall live. So Ezekiel prophesied, and this is the time to sing the other parts of the verse foot leg thigh hip back shoulder head you won't see me um, um, doing the feet and the and the legs and so forth but i hope you can follow along the foot bones connected to the leg bone the leg bones connected to the th uh, thigh bone the thigh bones connected to the hip Bone, the hip bones connected to the backbone, the backbones connected to the shoulder bone, the shoulder bones connected to the head bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. The bones and the sinews and flesh came into the bones and they stood up and there was no breath. So also, we may feel like we are living, but maybe don't have any spirit left. The Hebrew word ruach, I'm sure you know, means wind, and it also means breath, and it means spirit. Do you remember those cheerleader chants from high school football games? I was in the band, of course. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? And you can say, We've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? And then I'd say, we've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? And then we all end up saying, we've got more. Yay. We've got more. Hey, right? Well, that's spirit. I was in the band, of course, and it was just one. Uh, it was one thing to put the bones together, but to give us spirit to give us breath, to give us life, and to give us hope back into ourselves can be hard to do. But God said to Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, O breathe, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. In this way, Ezekiel prophesied to the captive Israelites in exiled Babylon, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. I, the Lord, have spoken and will act says the Lord. The Spirit gives us life even in hard times, and it was difficult for Ezekiel to prophesy, and yet we can prophesy to each other 
and lift each other up in spirit. The Lord has spoken, and I will act, says the Lord. Amen.